Hello and welcome to this video playing Muhammad 1763. It's not the rating, he's much higher rated. So let's see, probably we get to a ratty opening yeah, and we do. Okay. Yeah, this is a very natural looking setup with the bishop to d6. Um, white has an interesting way to play here with knight d2. It I know it looks a bit odd, but the idea is to play e4, and um, the knights support that very nicely. So here we go. And um, yeah, interesting. Probably bishop c7, or no, it goes to e7. So. What's happening here? Probably knight f6 is the best, uh, is the next move. So maybe put this here, knight f6, I drop back to c3. I don't want to trade. As usual, the black problem here is the c8 bishop. As usual means, as usual, in queen's gambit declined structures. It's just this eternal problem how to get this bishop into the game. If black solves this problem, then um, key is fine, usually. Interesting here. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if this is an idea. It's a bit weird, maybe, or a little bit non standard, but just keep this tension and play queen e2 next. If he takes it, yeah, that pawn on e5 will be uh, very uncomfortable, let's say, to play against. Yeah, my next move is most likely queen e2 if he keeps the tension. Yeah, and he does. So queen e2 probably... I wonder if c5 is his idea. Maybe. I'm quite happy with this if he plays it. I would have taken and maybe knight b5. That is an interesting choice, the bishop to b4. I'm not sure what he wants to do. Does he want to take or does he prepare knight to d7? Okay, a move that is interesting here is c5. This is just um, yeah, shutting down any c5 ideas. Okay, he's got the d5 square, but that is not super important here. Taking would be a huge positional error. So I don't think he's going to do that. It opens up the b-file, it allows me to play c4 later to control d5, so taking is not a good idea. If he goes knight d5, okay, that, that's just wrong. That is the kind of move that you can only play if you think the alternatives are like downright lost yeah, or something, something very dramatically worse. Because here you're getting, um, yeah, that is really, really uncomfortable. That was actually inaccurate. And not much, but knight d5, if he goes knight d5, I have to cover the pawn. And then after f6, I have to go bishop d6. Okay, that's not a problem. But, uh, yeah, it's not a problem actually. Yeah, so what are you doing now? There is no b6, there's no bishop d7, there's no rook b8. Black is running out of moves here. Constructive move, let's say. We can play whatever, king h8, but it doesn't solve any problem. Yeah. This one, so sit and sit and wait move. Um, 
Sorry. So, <laughs> okay. I was briefly thinking he might have e5. So, just, I mean, it's a desperation, but still. Okay, um, knight will come to f5. I think I'm just going to increase the pressure on e6 now. After he has played f6, that makes a lot of sense. Come on, make a move. No. Hmm. I don't know. It's, sometimes it's a bit weird how people handle the increment. I mean, you, rev you really sh should never lose on time. I mean, you can definitely lose on time if you have, uh, if both are down and you just like have to make, you know, you're just down on the increment and then all of a sudden a problem appears and uh, you simply don't see a move that doesn't immediately lose. That can happen, of course. But I mean, okay, that position is very bad for black, but you can still yeah, just sit and wait and hope for, um, hope for a miracle. So this line here, is I think quite um, quite nice for white. I went here. You can also play knight c3 first, but this is not bad. Knight fd2, rook e8, knight to c3. Yeah, he has this option to play e5, but that is not yeah strategically very desirable. The IQP position that you get is not like after this um, is not great. Okay, knight b3, knight f3. It's quite okay for white so he went knight d7 and e4 yeah and now this is already uncomfortable uh, but this is I mean, it's just not a great line that black played here bishop e7 bishop f4 just preventing any e5 idea knight f6 knight c3 i don't want to trade the engine gives trading and bishop e5 yeah it's an advantage but Generally speaking, don't trade if you have that much more space. Bishop e5, yeah, it's the best move. Okay. At least that's what Stockfish is giving him. So I wasn't entirely certain during the game, but I think it makes a lot of sense. You don't want to trade. That is not really helping at all. And Bishop e3, he might have e5. Yeah, so I have to do it. Queen e7, Queen e2, it's all very normal. Yeah, and now yeah, wide range of good moves. Anything is basically good. And c5 is a very straightforward approach. You just prevent black from playing c5 ever. And he has to lose more time, actually. This is the only reasonable way to play this. And white is better, but it continues. That, that is strategically um, surrendering, basically. Uh, the engine is on plus two, and it's not a surprise, even though it is in materially equal position. Rook d8, rook b1, that's all kind of normal moves. Tm, yeah, f6, now I can switch to the e6 pawn. That is the nature of those cramped positions. I mean, the, the person who has no space it tries to wriggle himself out and sometimes plays pawn moves that um, give the attacker additional ideas. So here um, he lost on time, which is really not not that. It's not necessary in a way. You can still continue to play this. Yeah, play queen f7 and then just yeah, hope that white is not um, yeah playing it right. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think it's a good display how to play the white side of Catalan structures. Thanks a lot for watching.